What's up, Magic fans, and welcome back to another episode of the Orlando Magic UK podcast, Penny for Your Thoughts. I'm Mikey. As usual, I'm joined by the gruesome twosome. Geraint, evening, mate. Evening. How are you? All good, mate. Thank you. And Paul? Oh, oh very well, mate. Thank you. I assume that we're going to be not referring to me as Paul in the next few minutes. No, we're going to be calling you Biffa for the rest of the episode. Well, that's if I remember that. But... Uh, <laughs> We're not going to tell everybody why we call you Biffa. because it's, it's a, a long story. It's it's, a long it relates story. to yeah, relates to my old old work nickname. But I swear a lot and was never frightened of a fight. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I can say this for the three of us: we are really excited uh, for our guest the uh, this evening, which is uh, Magic PA announcer, uh, PA announcer for the Tampa Bay Lightning, um, and press box announcer for the Buccaneers, uh, Mr. Paul Porter. Thanks, thanks Hi, for coming Thank Hi, Paul. Thanks, thanks for coming on. With you. It's, a, it's an honour. You're a, you're a, you're a magic icon. <laughs> ah. And uh, no, we, we are super excited to have you on. So, Paul, for those every every magic fan should know who you are, but for some of our casual listeners who might not know, can you tell us a bit about yourself and how you became a PA announcer and how how you got the job? Was it in 89? I think you started when the team uh, was founded in 89. Well, actually, that's when I started with the Magic. I've mm -hmm. uh, been there since day one in 1989. But prior to that, uh, I did public address announcing for the Cleveland Cavaliers uh, back in 1980. Oh, yeah. And then actually did two years of radio play-by-play -play with the Cleveland Cavaliers from 81 to 83. And uh, prior to joining the Magic and after leaving the Cavaliers, uh, did some work with the Continental Basketball Association. And that's how I ended up in Tampa. I actually live in Tampa and commute to Orlando uh, for the games. Wow. So uh, uh, that's how I ended up in Tampa and been in Tampa since 1985 uh, full time. So, but so how, I, how I got the job with the Magic, uh, I knew Pat Williams from his days with Philadelphia when I was in Cleveland, and uh, he uh, was very instrumental in getting the Orlando Magic to Orlando, getting an expansion franchise. And uh, he talked with me, and I talked with him, and uh, I actually applied for both the radio job and the public address job since I had done both with Cleveland. And uh, a guy by the name of David Steele, who is still doing the television uh, for the Magic, got the radio job at the time, but they said, we'd like to offer you the public address job. So I took that, and uh, uh, 32 years later, I'm still doing it, and uh, still, still at it, uh, doing uh, Orlando Magic basketball. Just uh, tomorrow will be a conclusion of another season for me. It's our last home game tomorrow evening. So nobody we have to say number one in the league at it as well. Number one in the league by far. Well, uh, there's actually the the Los Angeles Lakers announcer has one year of experience on me uh, as far as he's been with the Lakers a year longer than I've been with the Magic. But if you add in my year with Cleveland, then I actually have the same number of years uh, public address announcing as him. Uh, Lawrence Tanner is his name. Okay. So nobody knows I four quite as well as you then, Paul. If you're up and down I, there several times, I know every bump in the road. I know every rest area. I know where the restaurants are, and uh, uh, it's always funny. You, you guys have talked about Disney, and we, of course, uh, that's what Orlando is known for is Disney. It's amazing as you're driving on I four from Tampa to Orlando every night, every day. You will see someone in the left lane going 45 miles an hour, <laughs> pointing at all the magic ears and the, the Mickey Mouse and all of that. And they're not in any hurry because they're on vacation. So they're not too concerned about backing up traffic on I-4. Uh, probably <laughs> as you have main thoroughfares going in, the, in and out of London. Well, I know from experience from driving in Orlando, there are a lot of those people around. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, yes. They're, they're but they, they spend their tourist dollars, so we're glad to have them because we don't have a state income tax in, in Florida, so we appreciate the tourist. Number one industry. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we're going to do a quick uh, weekly roundup of, of what's been going on with the magic before we uh, 
throw some questions your way, Paul. Um, so starting with a few sign-ins, uh, transactions this week. So on Tuesday, the Magic announced that they were signing Cinderis Thornwell to a two-way contract. To, uh, the Magic were waving David Kennedy, um, who suffered the ankle dislocation a few weeks ago. Um, hopefully, Kennedy will get another opportunity again next season. Um, but Thornwell made his debut on Wednesday against Boston, um, having previously paid 14 games for the Pelicans earlier this season. Um, just before we jumped on the podcast, um, The Athletic announced that the Magic are signing Dante Hall for the rest of this season as well. Um, and then we had a sign-in last week, Ignis Brzdikas. I think I said that right, Paul, didn't I? That's easier hey. for you today, I guess. <laughs> That's one I'm going to have to learn. Um, so he made his debut uh, for the Magic against the Pistons, uh, who we played on Monday. Um, he came off the bench um, in that one. So except for Mo Wagner, the starters played no more than 23 minutes in that game. Uh, the bench combined for 70 points as the Magic went on to win 119 to 112. Uh, one notable performer was Mo Bamba, who finished with 22 points and 15 rebounds. Uh, Wednesday, the Magic played the Celtics. We saw the return of Evan Fournier, um, who was given a nice tribute during the game um, after having seven years in, in Magic pinstripes. Uh, Mo Bamba and RJ Hampton both recorded double doubles um, and the Magic really gave themselves a large mountain to climb after going down th or conceding 39 first quarter points uh, and eventually got blown out 132 to 96. Um, and then to recap, to, fin to finish the week, uh, the Magic on Friday played the Hornets, um, a back and forth game throughout. Uh, we saw Cole Anthony with another Another highlight reel where he put uh, Bismack Biombo on a poster in the fourth quarter, um, but the Magic fell short 122 to 112. Um, a couple of injury updates Michael Carter Williams, James Ennis, Chuma Rikiki, Otto Porter Jr., and Terrence Ross are all listed as out at the moment. And I don't know, guys, whether you agree, but it's possible we might not see them play for the rest of the season. Um, and Wendell Carter Jr. is currently listed day to day. Um, and you guys think about those players, do you think we're going to see one or two of them before the end of the season, or do you think there's, there's no reason, most... it's not much, not much point really, is there? Do you know what I mean? Um, give the uh, young guys an opportunity now. Um, you're seeing a lot of good play out of um, RJ Hampton, Mo Bamba, uh, Gary Harris is there for his veteran leadership, Cole Anthony's playing well. Um, so you know. I, I don't want to uh, encourage the tank, um, and we're not for that. We know we we watch Orlando Magic games to want to see the team win, um, but given it's five games left, the last home game tomorrow, um, as Paul mentioned before, against the Timberwolves, um, let's just play the play out what we've got um, and give Dante Hall a chance. Biffa, right for me. Um... The results are immaterial. Let's just see the lads play. If they win, they win. If they lose, they lose. As long as there's yeah. the effort and there's the growth. That's where I'm at with it for the week. Um, the only thing I'd say is I think Mo's been playing really well this week. Um, however, I think some stat lines actually cover up a few mistakes that he's still making, which he needs to work on for me. Um, there's one or two times he finds himself a little bit lost on defensive plays. Uh, he's still got a bad habit of slapping instead of going straight up. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, you know, uh, hey, he's learning. Well, one, thing, one thing I would point out to guys is that uh, if they continue to look at these young guys, and I know it doesn't seem all that important winning or losing, but actually every time they lose, they get a little closer to that better chance for the number one pick. So yep. there is, in a negative fashion, I guess something to play for or something to lose for, if I could put it that way. Uh, yep. That was kind of a big game with Detroit that you talked about because yeah. that's yeah. who they were battling in the East for the worst record. And unfortunately, Detroit won out and the Magic won the game. But uh, I think there's something, a benefit there. But the bigger benefit is probably being able to uh, take a look at some of these young guys and see what they have coming back. And yeah. I'm sure Devin Kennedy, uh, the guy that you talked about with that horrific ankle injury, yeah. uh, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised at all if if he's given a, an opportunity for training camp next year, if his ankle is healed, because I know they really liked him. Yeah, 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 definitely. We, we, 
definitely agree with you fully, Paul, on the on the results. If we win, we get we get the benefit of the team gelling. If we lose, we can celebrate the lose the loss as well because hey, it does help the odds. And uh, yes. it's yeah. it's a it's a stacked draft as I understand it. I've not watched college basketball, but I understand it's a stacked a stacked draft. So we'll we'll see where we go. We'll yeah. see what happens. And, you know, with all the lottery picks and all the draft picks they have with the trades, they got two from Chicago, which, of course, if Chicago doesn't make the playoffs and it's looking like they're not going to, uh, those become uh, lottery picks. So uh, there, there's a lot to keep an eye on. And uh, I do a radio show here in Tampa, and we were actually this morning talking about the fact that did the Magic do the right thing by blowing up the team and uh, acquiring all the draft picks? And I said, as tough as it is to watch them and, and accept all the losing, uh, they were kind of in a situation where they weren't good enough to contend for a championship, yep. Yep. but they weren't bad enough to get the number one pick. So they're kind of stuck in the middle and they never get a real blue chip player. Uh, and yet they're never good enough to win a championship. So it's almost like you have to take your lumps like the Brooklyn Nets did for many years as the New Jersey Nets, like the Milwaukee Bucks did for many years before they got the uh, Adetokumbo uh, combo. So you have to take your licks and then build those draft picks. They've got a couple of young stars, uh, Jonathan Isaac and Markel Fultz, that should both be perfectly healthy by next season and uh, do those two. And then, of course, the the draft picks that you'll have coming in and the guys that you've mentioned that have shown some promise. Uh, I think that all of that combined, uh, it, it may take two, three, four years, but I think they can definitely build a contender in that time. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any player you're excited for Paul that's on this roster at the moment? I, I, I like Markel Fultz. I was a big fan of him and I, I was so sorry to see him go down with that season ending injury. Uh, but uh, beyond that, uh, the guys that they have now, the guys they've, they've brought in, uh, I, I, I really like the guy they just brought in as the free agent, Wagner. Uh, I, I think yeah. that he's a guy that is going to find a home in Orlando, and uh, I like his style of play. He's a, he's a very athletic player. He's a physical player, and uh, it's hard to find good big men. So uh, I, I really like Wagner and uh, – I uh, think that uh, uh, he can, is somebody that they can also put into the mix uh, with the draft picks and with uh, 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 the players they have in Marco Fultz and Jonathan Isaac. Yeah, well, you, you talked about it Biffa last week, didn't you? About how he yeah. likes getting under players' skin and he did the same last night against the Hornets. He did. He's just got that little edge where he can get under, other, uh, get under the opponent's yeah. skin and put them off their game. And we haven't had yeah. that for quite a while. The closest we've got is uh, Michael Carter-Williams. and uh, uh, But Mo coming in and, you know, uh, what he's doing, it, it has to be applauded. He's playing with some real heart and taking the opportunities being given with both hands. More power to the guy. Well, he was a first-round draft pick, so they're depending on him to develop. Uh, it's been a slow development, but, but they're really counting on him to develop. And, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the final year of his contract uh, before he becomes a free agent. His rookie contract will be up, so they have to make a decision on him as well. Yeah, yeah on Bamba, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So as things stand, with, with five games left, the Magic, Cavaliers and the Thunder are all tied. Uh, they're all 21 and 46. They're a game ahead of the Timberwolves and Pistons, who are 20 and 47. Uh, the Magic play Minnesota on Sunday, as Paul already mentioned, um, and Minnesota also played Detroit on Tuesday. Um, so this time, or sorry, when we record our next episode, we'll know what our, our lottery position might look like. Um, just before I jumped on, Luke Jalil uh, tweeted, one of our followers said a few hours ago that the 538 uh, website has projected a five-way tie for second place in the lottery. So... Yeah. You look at the standings upside down, I guess, is what you what you have to do. Yeah. And uh, it, it's different kind of jockeying for the bottom spots as opposed to the top spots. But that's the situation they're in. So you kind of uh, roll with that and uh, you watch certain teams and say, oh, I hope they win tonight. I hope they win. 
I'm rooting for Detroit and I'm rooting for Oklahoma City and Cleveland and uh, those teams to to get the win and for the Magic not to mess things up by winning. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of trees. It's so there. wrong to say, isn't it? It's so wrong to it, say. It is, but that's the way it works. Yeah, absolutely. So let's let's uh, crack on. Let's talk to let's let's ask Paul some some questions. Let's find out a little bit more about about you. Go on, Ng. Um, so, firstly, Paul, um, I'm a fan of the Buccaneers and the Lightning, uh, which I know you do a lot of work for. Do you get uh, a championship ring for their wins last season and back in 2003, I think it was? Uh, yes and no. Uh, I did get a championship ring with the Lightning when they won the Stanley Cup in 2004. Uh, I was not working with the Buccaneers when they last won the championship, and I am working with them now. Uh, but uh, uh, they have told me that uh, I don't think I'll be getting a, a ring from the Buccaneers. Oh. I have been told I'll be getting another one from the Lightning. I uh, haven't gotten it yet with the pandemic and all that's been going on with them. But uh, they they say that I will be getting one. Sweet. That's nice. Sweet. Um, so... We've had many a difficult name to pronounce over the years. And in your job, can you tell us what's been your favorite name to announce as a, a PA for, for the Magic? And do you have any sort of stories announcing said player's name? Well, yes, uh, I do. But my all-time favorite has been Hito Turkaloo. And uh, there was so much I could do with that name. And I would, I would make it out as to Turk. Galoo, and it would go on for 10 seconds or so. And uh, he also is my all-time favorite Magic player. Uh, not the greats. I, I, I love Shaquille O'Neal, Dwight Howard, and Nick Anderson, and uh, Tracy McGrady and have been great players. But Hito Turkoglu has such a unique personality. And uh, he still comes to Magic games from time to time. Yeah. But I remember one night, I always, to start the uh, third quarter, I'll just do a brief recap of who's starting for each team. Mm -hmm. And I went through the magic and I named four of the five starters and I was screened out and didn't see Hito Turkoglu standing under the basket. So I went through the four players and then finally Hito started waving his arms and pointing to me and waving <laughs> his arms. And I said, Hito Turkoglu. And he turned and waved to all the crowd and everything. And the crowd cheered, of course. So it became a tradition with him that whenever he was starting in the third quarter, I would always say his name last. And I would always pause at least five seconds before I would say his name. And, uh, and he got to expect that. And the crowd would just kind of cheer him on. But Hito is such a neat guy in that you could have a game that, that you could cut the tension with a knife and the crowd was just on edge and the, the music was playing and the, the, the drums were banging and Hito would come up to the scorer's table to check in where I was and he'd say, oh, what are you guys doing for dinner tonight? You know, or something very <laughs> totally off the, uh, off the, the topic. Uh, or he'd say uh, something like, uh, uh, did you see that guy? Uh, going for pop, popcorn back up there and, and then he dropped it and it fell off of uh, uh, <laughs> it fell off uh, his tray and uh, and you know there was some things like that that would just kind of everybody had to laugh and he, he just had this knack of making people laugh and had a, a real neat smile as well yeah he's awesome. one of these guys that yeah he's one of these guys that you, anybody you speak to from the organization Everybody has got praise for the guy. Everybody loves him. But what what Grant's just asked you asked you it sort of leads on to where I want to go because I'm notorious for mispronouncing names. Absolutely awful at it. Always doing it. Have there been any moments where you've looked at a team sheet and thought, "How the hell am I pronouncing that one?" Oh, absolutely. It happens all the time. And now, with more and more European players and Russian players coming in, uh, it gets more and more difficult. But the one that's playing today and is a star in the NBA is Giannis Adetokounmpo. And I've heard probably 30 different pronunciations of his name where people have taken a stab at it. And you hear some pretty comical pronunciations of it. 
And uh, I went up to him and I actually says, Giannis, uh, I appreciate your play. You're one of the best in the game. I respect to you. Uh, I want to uh, give you uh, the correct pronunciation. And uh, I says, is it Adetokounmpo? He goes, well, it can be Adetokounmpo or it can be Adetokounmpo. And I says, well, which do you prefer? And he goes, either way, I'm fine. So I said, okay, I'll do my best. So I think I said five five times I'd say Adetokounmpo, five times Adetokounmpo. Uh, and he would he was just appreciative that I actually took the time to ask him. That's cool. That's really cool. Have there been any any, any embarrassing mistakes that you've made? Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> many, many uh, that I can look to. But the one I think that stands out the most was during the 1995 NBA Finals. And if you remember, the Magic were playing the Houston Rockets and were very high favorites uh, in that game. And they came out and just blew the ro Rockets away in the first half of the first game. And everybody thought, well, this is going to be a sweep. The, the Magic will win this going away. And then things just started deteriorating little by little. And you could tell the team was frustrated. The coaches were frustrated. The, um, the fans were frustrated as they saw the lead slipping away. And then Nick Anderson was at the free throw line. And uh, he had a very critical free throws to make to try and keep the magic ahead. And he bricked the first one. And he had three shots coming. And he shot the second one. And he missed that. And I said to the guy next to me, Nick, would you please make a free throw? not realizing that my mic was on. And oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Really? Please make a free throw. Oh, and no. He and I joked about it to this day. He looked over at me, and he, he shook his head, and he went to the free throw line and missed the third free throw. And uh, But to, that, to this day, we still laugh about that. And uh, one of the other ones, <laughs> Scott Skiles, who was with the team in year one, uh, he was very critical about when he was shooting free throws, once the ball was in his hand, you were not to utter a word. And it's just professional courtesy. You don't talk while the guy is shooting a free throw. Well, I was screened out by a referee and I said, Scott Skiles at the line. And just as he got the ball and was ready to shoot, I said, shooting two. And he turned over and he yelled at me and he said, don't talk while I'm shooting. You're not supposed to talk while I'm shooting. And uh, we laugh about that uh, to this day. But, you know, the thing with public address announcing, and you guys have done some of this yourself, it's not like if you're a writer and you make a mistake, you hit delete and go back. Or if you're doing a blog, you hit delete, and go back and correct yeah. the mistake. When you're a PA announcer and it goes out, it's out. You, you can't take it back. So you got to just kind of live with that. And uh, someone taught me a long time ago. In fact, it was Dave Zinkoff, the longtime announcer with the Philadelphia 76ers. He said, if you make a mistake, and this would apply today, I think, not only with PA announcing, but radio. If you make a mistake, just keep going. Because the majority of the fans won't even notice it. And the ones that did will think they misheard you. They'll say, no, Paul Porter couldn't possibly have said that. So you just very matter-of-factly go on and, <laughs> and, and uh, not worry about it. And that happened to me once where I said uh, the foul is on uh, uh, Dikembe Mutombo. And I said his fourth, third team foul. And it actually was his third. And the trainer came up and said, we only have three on Dikembe. And the official scorer said, yeah, it is only three. So then about 30 seconds later, Dikembe Mutombo commits another foul. And I said, the foul on Dikembe Mutombo is still his fourth, third team foul. <laughs> and the crowd kind of wondered, why did he say still his fourth? But it's because I, less than 30 seconds ago, had just announced his fourth. So you just kind of cover it up that way. And the person just thinks, well, I must have heard him wrong or I wasn't paying attention. Uh, rather than the worst thing you can say is, oh, excuse me, my mistake. You know, then you're calling it shooting off a flare, if you will. You should have wound yeah. him up there, uh, Paul, and said it was his fifth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what I've, often, 
what I've often gotten a kick out of, uh, referees will come over and they'll say, how many fouls does, and it'll be, it's always a superstar, how many fouls does so-and-so have? And they'll check with the official score and see if he has five or four. Then they know how closely they're going to call it. And I've always wanted to just say uh, he has five uh, or say he has four. And then the, they'll call a foul on him and I'll say his sixth. And then I'm, <laughs> I'm wrong before he actually had five. So he's out now. And uh, just to watch watch it that way. But uh, uh, it's a lot of fun there at the scorer's table. You never know what you're going to hear, what you'll hear from referees and uh, have good conversations with them. I, I've been friends with Kenny Maurer, who's been in the league uh, almost as long as I have. Uh, Joe Crawford was a great friend of mine. Uh, Bob Delaney, uh, Bernie Fryer, uh, just to name a few, uh, Dick Pavetta. And you really establish good friendships over the years. And I just had Ed Malloy last week. And he mm -hmm. says, every time I come to Orlando, I'm always glad that you're announcing because number one, you're easy to understand. And number two, I know you don't take it too seriously and you can uh, have some fun with it as well. So uh, you enjoy hearing those things from referees that are in every NBA arena. So, Paul, in all your years of, of being the PA announcer for the Magic, have you got any games that you remember like being one of your favorites? Obviously, we had the two trips to the finals, but is there any others that might stand out, game winners or anything like that? Well, it was actually uh, game seven against the Indiana Pacers back in 1995, uh, where the Magic had gone down to Indianapolis in game six or gone up to Indianapolis in game six and were soundly beaten by the Pacers. And then they came back to Orlando for a game seven, which was going to determine who would go to the NBA finals. And uh, the Magic uh, won the game going away. And there were so many people in the building and they had TVs outside and literally the whole city was watching and you could hear the whole town just erupting after they won. And they hadn't won the championship. They'd won the Eastern Conference. But at that time, it was as far as they had gone in their franchise history. And uh, there was so much excitement there uh, leading up to the 1995 finals. So I would say if I had to pick one game, that would probably be at that game seven of the Eastern Conference finals in 99 or 95 against Indiana. Makes sense. Definitely. Um, so, Paul, your announcing style with the long, drawn-out name is something I love hearing. Uh, my favourite, of course, being my favourite player, Nick Anderson. You do it so much better than I do, and the boys are going to take the mick out of me now. <laughs> anyway. Never. <laughs> <laughs> you got some attention um, there. Oh, thank you very much. Um, and, of course, the downplaying of the opponent's names. Um, but I know there was a, a story in the mid-90s of uh, some coaches who weren't uh, particularly happy, uh, Mr. Phil Jackson and Larry Brown. Could you tell us the uh, story? Yeah, uh, we had a player that went to University of Florida by the name of Vernon Maxwell, and he oh, ended up playing for Larry Brown with the San Antonio Spurs. And Vernon Maxwell, I don't even remember all the particulars, but he was like the uh, uh, prodigal son at the University of Florida. He was like the arch enemy for all Florida Gator fans. And of course, that's not too far from Orlando to Gainesville. So he wasn't very popular as it was. So he came to town with the uh, uh, San Antonio Spurs and Larry Brown. And the crowd immediately started getting on them with the boos and the cat calls and all that. And uh, they kept saying, you're a cheater, Maxwell, you're, you know, and all that. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, I'm going to join the crowd and uh, I'll just kind of get. <laughs> so when there was a foul committed by him, I would call attention to the crowd and I'd say the foul on number 34, Vernon Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> and the crowd would just really roar up. So finally, Larry Brown had had enough. And he came down to the to the referee and the scorer's table. And he says, you've got to stop him. And uh, I remember Joe Crawford, the referee, uh, he said to Larry Brown, stop him from doing what? And he says, the way he's saying his name. And he said, that's his job. He's supposed to say his name. And I could see that Joe Crawford didn't think a whole lot of Larry Brown either. <laughs> and uh, so the 
Huckabee Brown says, he's making fun of them. He's just trying to egg the crowd on. And Joe Crawford says, you can say his name any way you want. You just got to say his name. He said, now go coach your team. So ever since then, Larry Brown has been a fan of mine. And uh, the Phil Jackson story was, was kind of fun because back in 85, when I was working in the Continental League with Tampa Bay, Phil Jackson was the coach of the Albany, New York team. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we developed quite a rivalry between Bill Musselman, who was my coach there uh, in Tampa and, and Phil Jackson, who had coached in uh, Albany, New York. So we knew each other very well. Uh, and we got to the NBA. He got the job with the Bulls and I got the job with the uh, uh, with uh, the magic and it was really funny because there was one night when the magic weren't anywhere close to the bulls they were heavy underdogs in the game and everything just went right for the magic and everything went wrong for the bulls and the magic ended up winning and the bulls were furious and, and embarrassed going back to the locker room and i was actually doing some freelance work for a radio station in chicago and uh, I had one a part of my assignment was to interview Phil Jackson after the game. And uh, so I said to him, I says, Phil, uh, what would you say uh, was what happened tonight that the Magic were able to upset the Bulls? And he got real sarcastic. He was in a bad mood and angry anyway. So he said, oh, I, they're just the better team. Well, we're, we're not any good. I, we can't even be on the same floor with them. And I tried to let him recant. And I said, well, obviously you're the better team, but they just had a good night tonight. And he goes, no, no, if they played us 10 times, they'd beat us 10 times. They're just a better team. So I said, okay. So he didn't realize it, but I sent the tape up to the Chicago radio station. And the next morning when he was driving to practice, he heard his comments of, well, the Magic are just a better team. They're 10 times, they'd beat us 10 out of 10. Uh, and he, the next time that he was there, he said to me, why didn't you tell me you were working for a Chicago radio station? And I says, <laughs> well, you didn't ask me. I says, I gave you opportunity to, to recant. And after that, we just both laughed and both shook hands. And we just had fun with that back and forth. Uh, and, and one other coach that I've always had fun with is Steve Kerr, the Golden State head coach. I think he played six or seven games for the Magic in a very short stint. And uh, when I introduced the coach, I says, and the head coach of the Warriors is former Magic star Steve Kerr. <laughs> and he looked at me as a former star. I played seven games in eight minutes. <laughs> I, I wasn't a, a star at all. So we joke about that from time to time. But the one thing that Steve Kerr always remembered was my uh, trademark traveling call that when the opposing team travels i'll do the traveling or it doesn't count he was on the line you know kind of the agitating type thing and he came over to me this year and he says i can't believe after 32 years you're still doing that and i said <laughs> yes i am you know so every time it was a travel on golden state he would immediately look at me and say here it comes and sure enough i <laughs> I would let him know when Steph Curry traveled, I would say, traveling, no, you know, and then even Steph Curry kind of had a smile on his face. This is oh, great. Quality. That yeah. is absolute quality. It, well, talking about the calls, um, the start of the fourth quarter is always one of my favorite parts of attending a Magic game. Absolutely love it. Um, you, you just build the atmosphere up so much. And if it's a tight game or we're in front, God, it's great. Absolutely love it. So I, I want to know where the introduction came from. It's just something I came up with. I, I, I kind of treated the start of the fourth quarter with baseball, the seventh inning stretch, you know, where you're getting into the late innings and the, it's the critical time of the game. So I thought, you know, what, what better way to kind of kick things off than to try and get the crowd to give one last push going into the fourth quarter and the crowd became educated that, okay, now's the time when we got to get serious. Now's the time when the game is on the line here. And uh, that has worked very well. 
And then the guy that does our music uh, in Orlando, he came up with the Star Wars theme. And that kind of fit behind it, too, when I would yeah. say, all right, Magic fans, it's the fourth quarter. Stand and cheer. You're... And he would play the Star Wars theme, Bigger Than Life, behind behind that. And the crowd that, would stand. Was that Sim Simon the Music Guy, uh, Paul? Yes, that's who it is, yeah. Simon the yeah. Music Guy, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, he would do that. And, you know, when it's really fun, though, is that, it's easy for the crowd to get into it when you're down one or you're up one or you're playing the Lakers or you're playing the, uh, the Celtics or a top team. But when you're down by 28 to uh, Minnesota and you're going into the fourth quarter, it's kind of hard to get the people excited to say, yeah. all right, big fans, yeah. it's the fourth quarter. But there are a, a loyal group of fans that no matter whether they're winning or losing and no matter how much, they just really get into it and they stand up and they cheer. And Paul Porter said to stand and cheer. So we're going to stand and cheer. Uh, but you know, guys, one of the, 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 you probably heard the saying that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Uh, for me to walk down the streets of Orlando or Tampa or whatever, and here, and, and uh, you mentioned uh, about drawing the names out to hear kids on the playground going, Shaquille O'Neal <laughs> and, and doing that imitation uh, that just really uh, cheers me up gives me goosebumps and I know that my style will live on for another generation or two because uh, I was the one who really created that long drawn out name and it's caught on so well that just about every announcer in the NBA does something like that or similar but to see kids doing it nowadays and uh, when they're out playing uh, that's really fun and exciting for me. It's not just and it's kids, not Paul. just kids. It's us in the UK. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We do it as well, Paul. So it's worldwide. Yeah. Three, yeah. three adults Thank in the UK. You. Right? Can I, oh, no, and you've got you've got to know this, Paul. You've got to know this. When you're doing the stand and cheer fourth quarter, it's happened at home. I've stood and cheered yeah. at home just the same. Um, uh, it, it just brings a smile to my face. Absolutely love it. Really do. Well, I appreciate uh, that. And, you know, the way I look at it is I'm there for the fans. That's my favorite part. And, and this has probably been this past season that maybe the toughest year of my career mm -hmm. with no fans or very few fans there. Because my whole thing is to be to make the fans have a good time. And, you know, they slug it out trying to pay the mortgage or the rent or pay bills. And they've got maybe had a real rough day if if they were uh, in a legal situation or a medical issue or something like that. And I like the fans to be able to come there for a couple of hours and just let loose and have a good time and relax. And I like to be a part of that. And uh, that's kind of what I do. I, I try and make myself as the voice of the fans. And when I, did, when I really downplay the opposing team's name, it's kind of like the voice of the fan saying, LeBron James, you know, like, who cares? You know, they <laughs> don't even get to recognize the guy, LeBron James. Yeah. And you know, he'll do a tremendous I'll... slam dunk. And, you know, the, the, the few Laker fans that are there will be screaming. And I'll just say, LeBron James, you know, like, matter yeah. of fact, who cares? You know, uh, and there's a when there's a bad call, I love the uh, is it the Kill Bill music that you play? <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. The, yeah. The, I like that as well. Using uh, like what's going on and uh, uh, that sort of thing. Simon, the music guy, does a, a great job yeah. with those, and uh, he's picked up on my traveling call, and he'll play uh, every day. I'm shuffling every time uh, yeah. there's yeah. a Quality. traveling call. Uh, he'll play something like that. But uh, yeah. that just kind of adds to the fans' excitement and enthusiasm about it. Well, before we come on, I posted a video earlier of the uh, iconic intros you did for the uh, 95 finals with Shaq and Penny. And, mm. uh, and uh, would you be so kind? A couple of weeks ago, we had Hank Taylor on, who actually filled in for you on Wednesday for the Celtics game. Uh, we had him on as a guest a few weeks back, um, and he did a, an intro with the three of us. And I was wondering whether you could do the same. I think I can. I think I can. Uh, awesome. Uh, let me add a couple of magic players to the three of you. And, oh, amazing. Uh, oh, this is do. do you have preferences as far as your positions? 
I, I will we'll, play anywhere. Whatever, I whatever you want, anywhere. Paul. All right, you can play left out. Huh? <laughs> the only thing, I, the only thing I insist on, the only there thing I go. insist on is the number sixty-eight. I wear okay. a sixty-eight. All right, let me let me try it this way then. And now, stand and cheer your Orlando UK Magic. Add one forward, six two, and a few pounds. Paul Taker. <laughs> At the other forward, number 15, Hito Turkaloo. At center, seven foot from LSU, number 32, Shaquille O'Neal. At one guard, 5'10 and less pounds than Paul, <laughs> Mikey Floor. <laughs> and at the other guard, six foot and 179 pounds conservatively, Garrett Jones. <laughs> Ladies oh, and gentlemen, it's your good. Orlando UK Magic. Awesome. That is Amazing, Paul. Thank you so much, Paul. That is awesome. Glad to do it. Glad to do oh. it. Now you're forever embedded in magic history. <laughs> <laughs> in moments, that's up there, mate. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> up there for us. Brilliant. That is a special moment. Great stuff. Well, we're not going to keep you for any longer, Paul. Thank you for coming on, giving us uh, an hour of your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. Enjoy talking with you. And uh, whenever the Magic come back to London again, if, if I'm still doing the games, we'll have to all definitely get together. Oh, we'll be over next year, Paul. Don't yeah. worry. Oh, good. Yeah, we're, well, we'll be traveling. We'll be traveling. Hopefully things will be back to normal with the pandemic by then. And uh, just come by where I sit there at Center Court, and I'd love to meet you all in person. Absolutely. That would be awesome. Thank you That'd very be awesome, much. Paul. Thank you so all much right. for your time, Paul. Thank it's been you. a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank yeah. you. All the best. Have a Cheers, good one. Paul. All right. Take Cheers, care. Paul. Cheers. All right. Yeah. Oh, bless Mikey. Five foot ten. Mini Mikey. <laughs> I'm six foot, mate. I'm taller than both of you. Amazing. Oh, bless. Like, all right. 179 pounds. That's generous, isn't it? It did yeah, say well, conservatively. Lost... <laughs> yeah, no, I've lost some weight in fairness. Come on. <laughs> hey, not unless you've cut a leg off, it's not that much. <laughs> oh, okay. what was it Mini Mikey now, isn't it? Hey? Mini Mikey. Yeah. Shorty. Yeah. Quality. Mini Mikey in the elder statesman. What a, what an awesome guest though. What an awesome <laughs> guest. <laughs> That's so, superb. So, I don't even know where to carry on from now. But uh, <laughs> so let's uh, let's 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 reel it back in now. Uh so next episode then. So we are recording our final, let's call it final episode of the season uh, on Monday the 17th. So we've got five games to wrap up the season. Uh, I think it fi we finish with the Philadelphia 76ers next Sunday. Um, so we're going to be recording on the Monday. Um, we have got one special guest definitely lined up. Um, I think, right, is that right, Paul? Um, poss yes. Possibly yes. two. Um, we're not going to let anyone know because uh, we'll, we'll leave that as a surprise. But um, it's it's another another great guest on, hopefully. So uh, predictions then, week ahead and predictions. So last week, uh, the Magic went one and two. For the first time this season, the three of us got, <laughs> got it right <laughs> in the same week. The Magic beat the Pistons on Tuesday, losing to the Celtics and the Hornets. Uh, our friend Chris, uh, who come on, went two and one. So, uh, sorry, Chris, you were wrong last week. Um, but yeah, five games this week. So we start with the Timberwolves tomorrow night. And I don't think any of us can downplay how massive the Timberwolves game is on, on yep. Sunday night with the implications it's going to have with the lottery. Um, as I said earlier in the episode, uh, the Timberwolves also play the Pistons on Tuesday. So... Uh, a couple of big games there. Um, it's a midnight tip-off on Sunday. Uh, then we play the Milwaukee Bucks as uh, the start of a four-game road trip to finish the season on Tuesday, which is a 2 a.m. tip-off. 
Uh, then we have the Hawks on Thursday, which is a half past midnight. Uh, the Sixers on Friday and Sunday. Uh, the Friday game is 1 a.m. And I believe they still have to confirm the, the tip off time for that Sunday game. Yeah. So that will be announced later in the week. So predictions, boys, to finish off the season. So we can already congratulate Geraint because he's already got the crown of. Uh, <laughs> oh, look at look oh, at Vince that. Carter here. Oh, <laughs> But, so I believe it's six, four, and four at the moment. That's what I've got it as. So uh, on. consolation. You're gonna have to go different. So let you boys go first because oh. you won't be playing for second place now, boys. All right then, Paul. Come on then. Elder statesman prediction. Elder, Elder statesman, week. age before beauty and all that sort of thing. One thing um, I, one thing I will say before you give your prediction is mm. one thing we typically see at the end of a season like this, especially yep. when teams are tanking is playoff teams rest in big players in those last few games so they're healthy for the playoffs. Mm. So mm. that might be something we see which might sway one or two of these games. We'll see. What do okay. you reckon then, Paul? One and four. <laughs> Straight in there, I'm taking that number. Who one we, and four. I, we I think we beat the Wolves. I think we beat the team Wolves. <laughs> Sorry. I think we beat them. Um... I, I I have actually sort of wrote a little note. I had a little look earlier to see what I thought about the games. Um, and I think that you're going to start seeing, it's so close to the playoffs coming now, um, that I think you're going to see the teams still playing, at least for part, the rotations that they intend to play. Mm. I don't think we're going to see a lot of resting, uh, especially as... Atlanta are still pushing for home court advantage. They're currently sat fifth, I think it is. Um, so they'll be, and, and they can catch New York. It is a tight fight between them two. Yeah. So I don't see them sitting anybody. Um, the books and and Philly are they are they both still fighting for number one seeding, top seeding? The, the Bucks are, are with the, the Nets. So yeah. I can see them wanting yeah. to win that. Uh, yeah. And a, a Philly secured, Philly secured top seeding for for the they, East now. Yeah, they should. Well, they're, they're three games ahead of Milwaukee and Brooklyn. Yeah, so so, so it's one close. or two wins, and they will yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. But even so, with us playing the two being the two games before um, the playoffs, I think I still think that you'll see something of. A normal rotation. I don't expect that they'll play the full time, but I expect that you're going to see something of a normal rotation within that. Um, as such, I'm going one and four. Hate to say it. Well, we're definitely different this week, Paul. So, oh, oh, uh, earlier in the week, uh, sorry, earlier on, I had a look. So, since the trade deadline, so I'm going to put this out there first. Okay. Uh, I was looking at the Timberwolves, Pistons, Magic, Cavaliers, and Thunder how many wins mm -hmm. and losses they've had since uh, since the 25th of March. So the Timberwolves are actually 10 and 13 in that time. Uh, the Pistons are 8 and 16. The Magic are 6 and 17. The Cavaliers are 4 and 19. And the Thunder are 2 and 21. So I'm going 0 and 5 <laughs> just because I have to be different from you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, lots of people have tried. Hey. Lots of people have wanted to be different to me. <laughs> no, my, mostly my daughter. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You, you do know we're going to have a wooden spoon for the last place person, yeah? Are oh, we? mate, I'm going 5-0 and oh then. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Unless that's I your genuine know. prediction, G. I'm going 0-5. Oh yeah. I can't oh, you might, you might not. No. You as well. Yeah. The Wolves. Is it? Is it? Is, been... it is, is it? I've got to ask the question now. You both going out in five. Is this wishful thinking going into the game, wanting yes. us to lose? Have you ever had a magic game where you've wanted to go in and lose? Yeah. No. Because we've been through this before. <laughs> <laughs> and don't say you haven't, G. Because when... well, no, not against these teams. No, 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 no. In previous years, say like 2012, 13. 14 when you were hoping that Dallas for... game a couple of years ago, oh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, but they sat more than us. That was that Dallas game. That was a battle of that was a bargain basement game, and somebody had to win it. Yeah, it's I don't. This is where I don't get. That's a folly. You can't have. You know, everybody moans at that that particular game, and I get the final win of the season. That was a different one, but that that Dallas game, both teams were in the bottom, fighting for the worst odds, and somebody had to win that game. You can't you can't moan. It's it's a 50-50 chance at that point, and they sat everybody. Okay, we probably should have done as well, but you know it happens. If yes. So going back to my 0-5, I think the Timberwolves are playing quite well at the moment. Um, Carl Anthony Towns, um, Edwards, and um, although I don't particularly like him, um, what's he called? Is, I can't remember his name is now. It, is it because he played for the Lakers by any chance? Yeah, Mr. probably. D'Angelo Russell. Russell. Yeah, Russell. Yeah, no, they're playing well in fairness. The Bucks we're not going to beat. The Hawks on the road, that's going to be tough. And the, and the Sixers should put us to the sword given you know we're resting Wendell Carter we're, mm. we're playing you know eight nine nine man rotation I can't see us winning another um but you were mentioning about the uh other other teams around us uh, my brother's an Oklahoma City fan and um he's on full-on tank duty uh, but they've got to play the Sacramento Kings twice so That's there's right. hope there so um hopefully they can pull a, a W out somewhere which ruins their chances. So we'll see. But Owen five. Like I said, the uh, five thirty eight project- projections I looked at earlier. I don't know if you know how that works, but basically they take into account player rotations, injuries, mm. rest days, and, like all those little factors. I'll tell you what. I said it to you guys in the WhatsApp group before. I'm going to take up drinking if uh, if there's a five way tie in the lottery because I don't know how how those coin flips are going to land. It's going to be horrendous. Would you? Well, you know full well there's not a shortage of alcohol in this house. I'll be straight round, Paul. <laughs> I'll be straight. Where is, it, where is it yours? Where is it yours, Mikey? It's uh, it's a little bit sparse at times. Unless hey, you know I've, I'm coming round. I've literally got like a bottle of wine in the cupboard. There's going to be a lot of cider in the house otherwise. <laughs> Which we're going to do. So are we going to? Uh, we've talked about it. Are we going to do a uh, live lottery night Zoom call? I think that would be. We're gonna to have to. We'll get some of the other UK yeah. guys on here, Gary and there's, so, and there's so much on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, have to absolutely. whisper. So Ollie and everybody. The rest of the family. Yeah. <laughs> so Not known be- for being quiet. And before we finish, can you believe we've done a whole season of this podcast and people are still listening to it? Yeah, mate, it's amazing to me. <laughs> <laughs> Who yeah. wants to hear our opinions normally? Uh, it's not us, though, is it? It's the guests that we get on in fairness. You know? that is the That's only who they reason. want to listen to. That's the only yeah. reason. We just talk nonsense. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. It's been a whole lot of fun. Absolutely. So going into the off-season, so we're recording on Monday. Uh, we've got uh, the guys from the Ozone pod, which we're going to be doing an episode with them in June, uh, which we've already sort of penciled in the diary. Um, and I think we're going to be doing episodes, what, every two two weeks, three weeks, something like that. And, yeah, and when we've yeah, got some important like things, top, like some news crops up or something like that, we're gonna, we've are gonna we got some other guests uh, lined up as well. So Yeah, we'll we've see. got the, the six-man show, a collab, uh, something in the off-season as well. So yeah. uh, keep, keep your uh, eyes peeled for that. Yeah, and then we've got the lottery, we've got the draft. So we'll be doing some stuff around then. And, and then, then fixture release. Fixture release. We've got fixture the, release. Do you know what else? Do you know what else we got to do? Playoffs. Once the sixteen teams are all locked in, yeah. we've got to pick a team. Pick a team. Okay. So you're going with the pick Lakers. Team. Absolutely well, yeah, not. I was going to say, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Gosh. I might, I might just. You having a laugh? Just, for, get... just to annoy G. Yeah, you would annoy me. <laughs> Should we go Lakers and Boston, Paul? Sit here, right? sit no. here in a Cobe shirt. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm going Phoenix. Phoenix in the west and Charlotte, yeah. hopefully in the east. There we go. Said it. Anybody picking Brooklyn? Nope. No, I, I don't want. I don't want a team that's bought it. <laughs> no, be on the bandwagon, Mikey. No, come on, mate. There's you no don't way. Want to be on the bandwagon. No way, mate. I've been a Magic fan for nearly 20 years. There's no way I'm a bandwagon fan. <laughs> So is anybody chance. going for Dem? Will anybody go for Denver? No, no. For AG, sporting AG. Anybody no. got any thoughts on AG? 
He's not doing very well, is he? No. Denver are do doing you know well, what? but AG's taking a bit of flack from what I've seen. But do you know Maybe what? I was uh, looking this morning and there was some Denver fans saying, oh, if we can only get him a shooting coach for the summer. And I was thinking, well, that's what we've been saying for the past six years. So uh, yeah, well, good luck, welcome to good our luck world. with that. Yeah. And uh, thanks, Denver. <laughs> good finish. RJ's playing really well. He's really showing every every game improvement. He really is. He's uh, definitely an exciting prospect. Um, I said to you, Paul, didn't I, when we were chatting the other day, he reminds me a little bit of Westbrook with his yeah. athleticism and when he takes off and glides in the air trying to get to the rim. Um, I'd, I'd be happy to see a little bit of a uh, Westbrook attitude creep into his game yeah. as well. Yeah. Well, maybe so I, like, I, like play, um, I like players that edge. Well, Cole said he wanted to uh, work out with uh, Russ in the summer. So um, hopefully maybe RJ goes along as well. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now there's a guy who has got who who could easily have some Westbrook attitude, Cole, because he's got that that little bit of Edge. superstar attitude. Love him. Yeah. Love him. Yeah, there's something it. exciting about him. And I think as somebody as was said in uh, the Twitter group today, steal of the draft potentially. Getting Cole. He's got some real potential. If I know you, we talk about it on a regular basis. I know I'm a big bigger podcast guy than the two of you i was listening to brian windhorse in the week um i can't remember who the two guests were that were that he had on um but they're from espn and they did a redraft of this year and cole anthony basically didn't move what? yeah i know i know talk about it's because uh, people don't what because they're they not watching us no no they watch it, the condensed it, it, highlights they, they, they will have they will have seen two highlights of cole in fact they'll have seen three Two shots and yeah, and, and the interviews, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'll be it. That's all we'll have seen of him. Yeah, no, I've yeah. seen anything else. So we know, coming back we know to it, got... who else? Who's taking New York then for supporting Alfred? Anybody? And because that's got to be the criteria, hasn't it? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. So I've got my team. So you've got to pick a team in the East and a team in the West. Let's so do you're... it now. So who's your teams then? The Lakers and I'm Celtics. T- no, I'm taking the Suns. <laughs> And I'm taking the Hornets because right. of uh, my friend and allegiance to Mr. Lewis Hagerman. Right, I'm diving in quick. Uh, Mikey, are you, are you wanting to take Portland? Uh, I would like to, yeah. But go on. Uh, uh, okay, I'll go Golden State then. Let's see they make it because I love watching Steph. I would take Portland, but I don't want to upset. I don't. I'll let you have first pick of that. You know how much I love Dane. Yeah, exactly, mate. I can I can live I, with either I, one of them. And what about the East, Paul? East. Um... Slim Pickens, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, turd or a turd sandwich, isn't it? Which you want? Um... <laughs> 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 um... I'll take... Uh... I really don't know. Um... You got that countdown music, uh, Mikey. Mate, I, I'm going to go New York da, da, for Alfred. Da, 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 boom. <laughs> I'll go New York for Alfred. Solid, Mikey. I don't care who wins in that. I was going to go Philadelphia, and then I remember Dwight Howard plays for Philadelphia, so that is definitely not an option. <laughs> if JJ was still there, I'd have gone Philadelphia. And Tobias plays with Philly, so yeah. See, uh, yeah, yeah. The Bucks, yeah. Uh, all right, I'm going to go Portland and Philly. There we go. Portland and Philly. Awesome. So who? I've got an eight. I've got an eight potential eighth seed then, and uh, a seventh or eighth seed and uh, fourth. Yeah, so have I. Charlotte or might fifth. not make it, so we'll yeah. see. We'll see. And Mike has just gone the favourites. Yeah, same old. That's why it's a Liverpool fan, mate. Oh, Mikey's, gone, Mikey's gone for Utah. <laughs> yeah, Utah from <I'm> Philly. <laughs> you too. Good stuff. <laughs> Mini Mikey's gone <laughs> taking not, the best odds. Is that is that what is that what's going to be like every week now? Yeah, Mini, shorty. Next week, Paul, you're going to have to. I oh, know because. Our special guest won't want to hear it, but no, no, no. We'll, the, we'll, the Biffa we'll be, story we'll be very is professional in, next week. The Biffa story is an off-season story, along with I'll tell you what I'm going to do in the off-season. I'm going to drop your mm. uh, 
floss in video. You're going to not... go and say floss is coming out, isn't it? I yeah, found, that's gone that quiet, that has. Yeah, I found that the other day. So that's definitely going up in the off-season, definitely. It just looks like me there bonking. No, I just can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Right, on that note, on that note, for the latest news, follow Orlando Magic UK on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify and YouTube by searching Penny for your thoughts and visit our website, orlandomagicuk.com. There you go, nearly left that bit off. Guys, been a pleasure. <laughs> I'm going to let you go before it gets even, before this goes down there even more. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, There's we'll that line you... and I'm approaching it fast. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys on Monday next week for the uh, season review. Review. Yeah. Go, magic. Go magic. Go magic. Gee, are you wanting uh, Evan to come back and drop 60? Uh, no, because he plays for the Celtics. And I hate the Celtics. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean you hate Evan now? Yeah. No. He changed <laughs> no, his like name. <laughs> He's a Celtic, mate. No. So you must hate him. <laughs> no, if we. If we were to win a game this week, I'd rather it be the Celtics. But like what you guys think, I think we'll beat the Pistons. I think we'll probably be quite close with the Hornets as well. I don't think they're all that. Uh, but I'll go one and two for the week with a win against the Pistons. I think. That hangover is really bad today, isn't it, G? It yeah. is, yeah. You're normally yeah. quite quick for some of your comebacks, but you haven't put anything tonight. <laughs> You're just letting it wash over you. So yeah, you're letting exactly. it wash over you or you haven't realised it's hit you. Ha, 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 ha.